Thank you very much, everybody, for taking the time to, you know, uh, it's been a long day for everybody. And I uh, just wanted to welcome you to Bitcoin Wednesday. And it's our first time. It's fun. Uh, today we're going to talk about some really basic fundamental things. The core infrastructure that supports Bitcoin, Ethereum and all the cryptocurrencies are things called nodes. A node is a computer or server that receives transactions, validates them, records them and translates or transfers them and, you know, to all the nodes. And that is the weakest point of this entire ecosystem. In my opinion, there are three great inventions uh, that, that men and women have, have, have come up with. The wheel is the first, because it gave us mobility. I keep saying that over and over again. The internet is the second greatest invention, because it connected us. Bitcoin and the entire you know, underlying blockchain technology is mankind's third greatest invention. It's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. And because with the wheel, we got mobile, with the internet, we could connect with each other, with our borders. And now with Bitcoin and blockchain technology, we can transact on a peer-to-peer -peer basis without borders as well. However, there's a flaw. The flaw are the nodes. Today, the entire market cap of all cryptocurrencies is less than half a trillion dollars. It's not a threat to the ecosystem yet. The total gold on Earth is worth eight trillion dollars. We are of the opinion that ultimately, when the market cap of all the cryptocurrencies approach two to three trillion dollars, potentially some large, powerful actors around the world may start getting uncomfortable and begin to do things to undermine the network. Without nodes, there's no Bitcoin. So we are looking to secure this infrastructure and cement this groundbreaking technology forever. And how are we going to do that? I'll tell you a quick history. Uh, I used to be the technical leader at Cisco, I was responsible for iOS, which is a software that runs 80% of the world's internet infrastructure. I did that for five years and I left in 2005 to go create Multiven because I believe that the internet deserved a mommy and daddy that was independent and politically neutral. So, Satoshi said in 2009, if you can keep a node running, you'll really be helping the network a lot. Without nodes, there's no Bitcoin, there's no Ether, there's no Litecoin, there's nothing, it's over. And what we're looking to do is this. Uh, very quickly, I think I've said this in, in a nutshell, uh, without internet connected computers called nodes that relay validated and cryptographically record blockchain data, there's no Bitcoin. So we are looking to cement the future of all decentralized applications. I'll show you how. The first thing we're doing is we are changing the way people buy and sell computers. That's the basic thing. Smartphones, smart TVs, and all that. So we're essentially creating the world's first blockchain-based marketplace for the three trillion dollar IT, telecoms, and network hardware, software, and services market so that everybody on earth can buy and sell all these things, whether it's brand new or pre-owned or used or decommissioned, on a peer-to-peer -peer basis, solely powered by smart contracts. That is it. Now, what we do next is very interesting because once we do that, the benefits for everybody is it's, it's obvious. Lower OPEX and CAPEX. You have decentralized procurement for businesses and governments around the world. You can track IT assets. You can unlock tons of hidden value. And something that's really cool is that you now have the world's first proof of ownership on the blockchain. What's that? Justin sells me this phone. We take some of the data, the constant data, we put it on-chain. Sorry, we take the constant data, we store it off-chain, like the part number, the serial number, the vendor. That's stored off-chain. We link that cryptographically to the variable data, which we store on-chain, like ownership, address XYZ, and location number one Main Street, Amsterdam. That's stored on-chain, right? Six months later, I sell it to this young man. We update the records on the ledger, and so on and so forth that essentially becomes the world's first immutable proof of ownership record 
on the blockchain. So that in five years, Richard gets to, you know, to own that computer and he wants to get something fixed. He goes to the Apple store, Apple says, show that, do you have any proof of ownership? He says, yes. Check the blockchain, it's there. So, <clears throat> one of the cool things we're doing with this, which I think I talked a little bit about this, and also you know, to, to the fact that we will be you know, recording a live you know, copy of the internet install base on the blockchain as well. So essentially, you have the internet infrastructure, which is the infrastructure upon which blockchain you know, infrastructure runs, but we will be backing up a copy of the internet onto the blockchain so that in the event that there are outages, or censorships anywhere in the world, we can restore those, you know, those downed portions of the internet back from the blockchain, real quick. So I know that uh, we're running short of time. One of the cool things we're doing that is also very interesting is the fact that we're taking some of the transaction fees from the mom, from the open marketplace, and using it to fund the cyber defense of all Bitcoin nodes around the world. Um, <clears throat> one of the flaws or the, 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 the challenges that Bitcoin and Ethereum and so on and so forth face today is the fact that 80-85% of all nodes that make up this network reside within the EU and the US. That means if you know, a certain government wants to take action, they could essentially centralize all the nodes by cutting off the router because obviously the nodes need to communicate with each other. And if they can't do this, if they can't do that, or somehow you know, someone compromises the routers and cuts off their connections, you can wake up tomorrow and find out that all the nodes that run Bitcoin or Ethereum are all sitting in Amsterdam or in some other hostile environment. So we're looking to protect and defend against that by using some of the transaction fees from the open marketplace to do that. And finally, I know we're running out of time, we're also going to be putting some of the resources that we get from the marketplace towards designing and building what we call open source nano satellite full core nodes that we're going to be putting in low earth orbit within the next five years. I know I'm speaking pretty fast because uh, I'm out of breath. <laughs> so that's what it looks like from a high level. We're launching an ICO uh, to essentially distribute the multi-coin. That's what we named the, uh, the, the, the token. And it's to provide liquidity to the, and, and serve as a medium of exchange for, for the marketplace. And uh, what else do we have? You, you have time. You can take your break here. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> so real quick, I think uh, anyone seen this recently? This was, I think, a week ago. There was a DOS attack on the Lightning Network. Yeah? OK. So it is important to have the nodes. Anyway, that's, that's a key gist there. And this is talking about our, our little project of, of putting nodes in orbit. And the, the fundamental technology of that is, is called delay tolerant networking, which we're going to port into, into, into Linux and, and, and put in some open source routing technology in there so that this nodes, you know, the first nine nodes will be in orbit in 2022. And these nodes will be able to communicate with each other on a best effort basis using DTN. And this will be full core nodes in orbit. Not just like you know, relaying you know, uh, blockchain data through Blockstream and things like that. So this will hopefully help to further decentralize uh, Bitcoin nodes in orbit away from the jurisdiction of any you know, hostile uh, earthly actors. That's uh, what they look like. This is the team. We're a team of about eight, 10 people right now, and uh, we're looking to expand that. We're hiring uh, folks with, with uh, you know, um, experience and expertise in, in, in uh, satellite technology, in you know, aerospace engineering, and so on and so forth, um, and also expanding our advisory team as well. <coughs> a quick uh, talk about the token metrics. We, we have a max supply of 2 billion coins. It's a huge market that we're serving. So it's you know, three to four trillion dollars. So it's a huge market, but we're only selling 10%, and really selling about 10% of the token into the, uh, through the ICO right now. We didn't do a pre-sale or pre-ICO. There's a cap of 1,000 ether worth of tokens that each investor can play, because we don't want to centralize our tokens in the pockets of any large investors whatsoever. And um, so quick distribution out there. We're, we're doing a 10% sale right now. 
Uh, we launched the MOM uh, in about six to eight months from now, and then we'll do another, you know, sort of 10, 20% of a token sale in a reverse auction in about uh, six, seven, eight months from now. So, so roughly uh, today, uh, we buy smartphones and computers, you know, in a centralized and, and obviously dictatorial manner. And we anticipate that within the next two to three years, we should be able to at least get 0.1% of the current market, you know, as transactions through our marketplace. And uh, that's what our predictions look like, but we, that's very conservative, by the way, as well. Uh, roadmap, we're at about here right now. Q2, we're gonna start the cyber defense of Bitcoin nodes in about uh, two weeks from now. And, um, one of the cool things I wanted to say very quickly, sorry I'm a bit rushed, is that uh, when I started the company in 2005, one of the, 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 the biggest challenge for us was that how do we secure the internet objectively without, you know, without uh, you know, any political agenda and so on and so forth. So I, I created something called you know, my solver, which is an AI engine, and the goal of that was to use this software engine, this, you know, to, to, to heal the internet, but you know, at the very beginning, they had no knowledge. So we had to feed it with knowledge, and we created a social intellectual network called Pinkster, and invited you know, what we short list of 1,000, 1,200 experts to this community. And uh, you know, we have folks like uh, Dr. Roberts that designed the ARPANET. We had um, Tony Lee that co-invented BGP4, which is a writing protocol that, that uh, powers the internet backbone. And uh, in 2007, member number 62 was a guy called Hal Finney. In my opinion, Hal is Satoshi Nakamoto. So Hal joined in 2007, and, um, and uh, you know, God bless his soul, he passed away in 2014. But um, I, I think the key driver for, for Hal for, to, to join our community was the fact that he saw this as a decentralized pool of experts that were working together to help make the internet work better. And uh, you know we had engineers in 55 countries. There was no, you know everybody could could contribute and add value to what everyone else was doing. And I'm glad to say that today we have you know this AI engine has solves 60 to 70 percent of all problems that impact the internet. So uh, we are going to deploy all of these assets onto the blockchain and help to secure the future of this infrastructure. And we like to think we're probably the only ones in the world that can do what we're doing because of the nature of all the geopolitics going around the world right now. Uh, some of our customers right now, around the world, if you drink beer, AB InBev is the largest brewer in the world. If you have furniture, most people have IKEA, we support their networks. If you fly planes, if you go do rockets, Talis. If you like Pepsi, we make it work. You don't hear about us, we're behind the scenes. And our goal is to help secure this future, this blockchain future. It's here to stay. It's not good anywhere, no matter what anyone does about it. And uh, we'd like your support. Our ICO is live at uh, multivin.io. And uh, thank you for your time. Questions? So an applause here for our great speaker. Uh, All right. And who has a worthy question here for, uh, for a worthy speaker? Anyone? My hands up. Surely my questions here. If not, I'll I do. All right. Here we go. Thank you. Great speech. Can you tell me a little bit more about um, the funding you were doing in the cyber security with uh, the story about our routers? You're saying they're not safe? Well, the sorry guys, I was a bit rushed. It's been a long day, but um, the, the very simple science behind this is that every node that runs you know, some sort of blockchain protocol, whether it's Bitcoin, Ether, or so on and so forth, those nodes connect to other nodes through an internet gateway. That internet gateway is very likely a router of some sort. In America, we say routers. It's a router. That router, <laughs> that router is run by software, right? That software is essentially based on internet protocol. Today, 80 to 90% of all the routers that run your nodes, when you get home, check your nodes, whether you mind or you don't mind, check your nodes at home. Look at the router, that, not your Wi-Fi router, the actual router that goes to the internet. Your Wi-Fi router only allows you to connect to the internet within your house. The one in the basement is very likely made by a company in the US or a company in China. 
all right? Now, if it's not very complicated, with two lines of commands, I can tell your nodes to drop all the packets that speak Bitcoin. So you can still watch all your football or your YouTube, but with two lines of command, an actor that has a lot of power can log into your router without you knowing about it and tell it to deny or drop packets that speak Ethereum, right? Bitcoin, and so on and so forth. It's not very complex at all. So that when you wake up the next morning, you find that all the active nodes that are running Bitcoin network or protocol are all within one actor's jurisdiction. If that occurs, it's the end of it. It's game over. Even if it recovers the next day, if that occurs, the value of Bitcoin will go down to zero or near zero, and the entire industry will lose faith because without decentralization, there's no Bitcoin. All right? IBM has you know, employees in maybe 100 countries, right? Walmart has over a million employees. Does that mean they're decentralized? No, they're not. There's still one trusted, you know, there's a trusted third party <laughs> involved. So decentralization is fundamental to cryptocurrencies. Sorry. Uh, I would like to say that I completely agree with the things you're saying, but you want to launch uh, nodes into space so we can continue communicating uh, uh, the systems with each other. Um, don't you? Uh, how do you think about encryption? Because we can self-sign uh, certificates and hide uh, the stuff. Our data. Uh, we can encrypt our data, and then people cannot see into this data and see what it is. So. Do you, don't you think there's uh, a way for encryption uh, to also beat this problem? Uh, I, I like the idea of sending orbits into space, uh, but uh, yeah. Thank, thank you very much. So encryption is great. I mean, the data you put on the blockchain itself is encrypted, right? It's encrypted. So the, it's impossible. It's almost impossible to corrupt, to corrupt the data that's on the blockchain, all right? But those, those nodes have to communicate over a channel. It's like if I call your office, it says to speak to John, press one, to speak to Jane, press two. So if I want to speak to Jane, I'm gonna to have to speak on channel two. If channel two is down, I can't speak to Jane. So that's the whole essence of this. You know, what we're looking to do is to harden the cyber defenses of all the nodes that exist today on Earth launch the marketplace so that kids in Africa, kids in Latin America, kids in Southeast Asia can afford to own and operate and, you know, nodes which will lead to further decentralization and obviously to ensure and cement the future of this entire ecosystem we're going to create based on commercial off-the-shelf hardware, x86 you know, boxes, they're really you know, nano satellites, very small, small cubes, put up some, some uh, open source you know, routing software in there, put some DTN technology into it and put them in orbit. That's the first ring, the low orbit, less than a thousand kilometers up, you know, and, and, and speaking to each other on a best effort basis using DTN when they come into, because we're talking, you know, interplanetary distances, and when they're close to Earth stations, they, they exchange, you know, updates with each other, and so on and so forth. So the goal of this is to, to uh, disintegrate, I guess the word is to, 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 to there's a word for this, there's another dis. dis in, incentivize to, 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 to basically, you know, when, when an actor wakes up in two, three, four years from now and says, you know, SHIT, what the heck's going on? You know, you know Bitcoin is as valuable as gold. What, we got to stop this stuff. It's too late. That's the whole goal. And this is the time to act. Otherwise, it's going to be too late. Okay, let's give a grand applause. Thank you. Thank you.